What's up KSP fans, it's Loop, and welcome to another exciting Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Today we're not actually in the KSP game, uh, we're going to be looking at how to use a Delta V map. Now this is extremely difficult, and if I mess anything up, please leave a comment in the description, and I will get, or not in the description, in the comment section, and I will actually re-record this one, it's going to be extremely simple to record. Um... Because these are really tricky to use, They're, and uh, I still don't totally understand them. I haven't found a tutorial out there, so I figured this one might help. I was never originally planning on doing this, so it's kind of a, a whim of the moment, and this is as far as my understanding goes with this. So, if you're trying to get somewhere, you need to take your your destination, and you need to add up everything in between there, basically. So, the numbers on the ground are how much fuel it takes to lift off from there. The numbers on the surface are how much it takes to land or lift off, depending on uh, your whether it's an atmosphere. Now, it's going to be a little bit different for uh, planets because you could parach use parachutes. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to overdo your, your Delta V than underdo it for your ships. And the reason I'm doing this before the advanced rocket design is uh, we'll be looking at the Delta V requirement, or the, how to calculate your Delta V of your rocket, uh, which is... Uh, harder than this, but simpler at the same time, just because I understand it more, and these are really, t these are difficult for me, because I've never used them. Okay, so if we're trying to get to the moon, first we need to take the number under case, the Kerbin, then we need to take the number in between, uh, which is your transfer orbit, uh, then the 210, which is your, uh, your, basically to circularize your orbit, and then 640. You're gonna even if you're not planning on circularizing the, your orbit, add this as a safety precaution to your ship. So we need to do 4,500 4, plus 860 plus 210 plus 640, and then we need to lift off from the moon. So we need to do another 640. Uh, now we don't need to do the 210 because the uh, because we won't be having to circularize our orbit. So we add our plus 860, oops, I screwed up, so let me go ahead and redo that real quick, uh, 4,500, I accidentally hit plus twice, 860, plus 210, plus 640, uh, and then, you know, again, plus 640, plus 860, and I don't know what the heck my calculator is doing, it's screwing up, I'm not used to this, I normally do it on my iPhone, which is a better calculator, plus 640, then we need to do plus 640 again, and then plus 210. No, not plus 210, plus 860. Ah. This thing is funky. Plus, alright, let me just do this real quick. Plus 210, plus 640, plus 640, plus 860. And then you use parachutes to get into Corbin, or Kerbin, so uh, you don't need to calculate the delta V requirements for that. Uh, we come up with a total of 7,710. You're going to want to overshoot that a little tiny bit. Um, now, the reason there is no uh, circularization requirement for Kerbin is because you can aerobrake easily. Uh, and that's most of the time you're just going to aerobrake straight into the atmosphere. But you can actually add um, an extra 500 or so delta V, depending on what you want. Like I said, you're always going to want to overshoot. So that's for the moon, that's extremely simple to do. 7,710, uh, that's an estimate, you're going to want to overshoot, like I said, that's uh, very important. So uh, let's look at Duna, which is a little bit more difficult to do, because again, you've got such a long distance, every little move you make is going to add more delta V. So if you mess up your piloting, you're going to add delta V, if you don't burn at the right time, you're going to add delta V, or minus delta V for arrow braking, whatever. Uh, so again, we add first the 4,500 to get off Kerbin ground. So now, uh, that's assuming we're in the stable orbit of Kerbin. We use the 950 to orbit the sun, and then 110 to get into the Duna transfer orbit, 370 to circularize our orbit, which uh, again, like the moon, may not be needed if you use arrow braking, uh, or just in the moon's case, just go straight in for it. Uh, and then we get 1380. Uh, I'm adding the 1380, just assuming that you don't use parachutes, but again, using parachutes is going to even lower that further. But uh, it's always good to have extra. So then you do plus 110 yet again, plus 950. 
and you come up with your final number of 8,370 for uh, Duna. Now, it's not much more than the moon. It's uh, actually relatively easy to get to Duna. It doesn't require much more delta V. It's just a longer trip uh, with a lot of orbital stuff. And we'll get to that on how to get to Duna tutorial uh, later on in this series, uh, how to do the orbital transfers Later on, we'll be looking at a calculator that's really helpful. Uh, I forgot to mention this, this a link to this picture and the forum thread is going to be in the description for those of you who want to go thank the author uh, of this, because I'm not the one who made it. Somebody else made it, which is very nice. Okay, so let's look at something I've never been to, Tylo, which is extremely difficult to get to. Now, this, this is kind of weird because it's a moon of another planet. If you time your insertion right, you could actually just go straight into an orbit of Tylo, but it's easier to add in this 2,190 to get to Tylo from Joule, because uh, this is going to assume you're in a stable orbit around Joule, then you burn for Tylo. So let's start. 4,500 from Kerbin. We get 950 to get to the Sun. Uh, and then to get to Joule is a whopping 965. 965. Uh, and then we've got to orbit Joule, which uh, these numbers are so dang close together. We got 2,630. 2,630. Uh, plus the 2,190 to get to Tylo. Plus 3,070 to land. Or uh, actually, plus the 940 to break orbit, plus the 3,070, plus another 3,070 to take off, 3,070, not 370, and then another 2,190 to get out of, uh, to get back orbiting around Joule, uh, and then we've got plus 965 to get from Joule to the sun, and then finally we get plus 950, to get from the sun to Kerbin, uh, and then we don't need anything for Kerbin, assuming that you have parachutes. That is a whopping 17,920 delta V, but that's not even the lowest you're going to get. Uh, Tylo is relatively difficult to land on, uh, only because it's so big and there's no atmosphere to slow you down, so it's going to require a lot of thrust, but EVE is even harder to land on in return. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, again, this is a really short tutorial, just kind of showing you guys how to do it. So, same thing, 4,500 from Kerbin, 4,500, plus the 950 to get to the sun. Then from the sun, we got only 80 delta V, which is less than Duna to get there. It's less than Duna, but it's the delta V requirements for EVE to break or, or to circularize your orbit and to land and return are a lot more. Actually, landing on EVE is relatively easy. Uh, because the atmosphere is so thick that parachutes work like a charm. Uh, they work better than on Kerbin. <clears throat> so, uh, we do the plus... Oh. I messed up again. Sorry about that. 4,500 plus 950 plus 80 plus 1310 to uh, circularize your orbit plus the whopping... 12,000 to uh, land on EVE. Now, 12,000, that's if you have no parachutes. Again, I'm just kind of showing you guys without parachutes. Also, the braking orbit, you can aero brake. Uh, we'll have aero braking tutorials to show you guys. Uh, and, of course, parachutes would completely stop that as well. So, now we need another 12,000 to get off of EVE, plus another... 80 to get to the sun, plus 950, and then we come up with a whopping of 31,870, yeah, that's right, 31,870 delta V, but if we go ahead and minus that extra 12,000 for, um, for no parachutes, and even if we wanted to aero break, we can minus 1310, so, uh, minus 1310, we come out with 18,000, which is still more than Tylo. Uh, people say Tylo is the most difficult planet to get on, but in Delta V requirements, it's not. It's just the fact that it's uh, really hard to land on because there's so much gravity. Uh, and people aren't used to trying to land without gravity, but in reality, it's not much harder to uh, 
it's not that hard. Uh, Gilly is extremely easy. It's only uh, 35. Gilly is tiny. Uh, again, you can get this Delta V map in the description, and just remember you add up the numbers there and back, uh, and you'll get not a rough estimate. You'll actually get an overestimate, uh, because I'm not calculating error breaking, and I'd prefer to do that, because sometimes you come in at an angle that you can't error break, uh, because you're too far away, or, uh, just for whatever reasons, uh, or even your parachutes, you forgot them or something. It's better to overestimate than to underestimate. So thank you guys for watching this video. Next episode we will be doing uh, the advanced rocket design. This one came before just because uh, I felt it necessary to understand a Delta V map. And like I said, I, I haven't seen a Delta V map tutorial out there on the internet, not even on the wiki. It's there's They're virtually non-existent. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Goodbye.